Well, draft coming up always, I know, an interesting time. You're pretty low-key when it comes to it. Will you pay much attention to it, or I mean, will, you, will you watch the, the draft tracker or anything like that? Hey, if I'm in the office, uh, I'll watch draft tracker, and I know, uh, you know Matt always does a good job of, of watching things for us. But we're always interested in what's going on, uh, not only with our current players, but uh, some of our future players. Uh, it impacts the program. Um, sometimes in a positive manner and sometimes in a negative manner, but uh, always proud of our, our players that get to move on. And, uh, you know, hopefully you, uh, you have opportunities to bring in good players that are drafted as well. What, what's kind of your gut about some of the guys that maybe have the, the best chance to go early where it could be a decision for them they'll have to make? Uh, as far as our incoming recruits, uh, I, I think there are a number of uh, those recruits that are guys that could be good drafts. Um, but I, I don't think they're signable just because they're very good students and education is important to them. So um, I think we'll hold on to our, our entire draft class. Uh, that could uh, could change, uh, you know, with rounds and money. But I think the two that uh, probably have the uh, you know the highest ceiling right now or, or, or furthest along would be uh, Alex Greer, the, the uh, junior college outfielder, and then Ryan Roper, uh, which has gotten a lot of attention. But uh, I, you know, again, the education portion is important to them, so I think we're in good shape, but we're going to find out. Now, for those guys, do you think a lot of times some of the scouts will, will stay away from them, not want to necessarily waste a pick on them if the scouts know that, that school's in, in important for some of those guys? I think a lot of times scouts do stay away. They, they, won't, they will not waste a pick on them. Uh, occasionally you'll see a team that will just take a flyer on them late and, uh, you know, hope that they can sign them. Uh, but the way the draft has changed, uh, after the uh, 10th round, so starting with the 11th round, there's a, a cap, and so it's much tougher to buy kids out of school. As far as Justin goes, uh, as you look at his skill set, what does he bring to a, to a professional program right now as he is, and then where do you feel like he needs to maybe improve to make sure that he can be successful at that level? Well, he's done a great job hitting, obviously, and, and uh, does a good job with plate coverage and, and does a very good job as far as... Uh, recognizing pitches, uh, you know, the discipline strike zone. Uh, you know, defensively, he was very good for us this year. Uh, there's a number of positions he can play. I think he's just got to figure out, or the organization has to figure out where he fits and then really refine his skills in that area. Uh, you know, when he was here, he played the infield, he played the outfield, uh, he played second base, left field, center field. Uh, so he, he did play a number of positions. I think as he uh, settles into a given a position or a given area, he'll continue to improve that much more. As far as Jordan goes, he was a guy that had a chance to go last year, came back. What do you see in terms of his skill set? And and I mean, he may be one of those guys that could have a, a hard decision to make here this weekend. Well, he's uh, you know, very athletic and uh, has a lot of strength. You know, does a lot of things well. Uh, you know, it, I don't know you know where he's going to fit into the draft. Uh, uh, there's some things that, that he did very well, and there, there's some things he needs to continue to improve upon. Uh, but you know, organizations have to project just as we have to project with uh, with our you know incoming players and, and, and signees. How's Kevin doing uh, health-wise? Is that something that could impact where he goes this weekend, or is that not something that should be an issue? I think it could impact uh, you know where he goes draft-wise. Uh, I think there's enough people that like him that uh, I, I would think he's still going to be a draft. Uh, it may move him down a little bit lower. Uh, you know, he's about a week away from a throwing program, and you know, after uh, a couple weeks of throwing uh, in a given program, you can start working him back uh, on the mound. So, uh, you know, I think we did the right thing with him, and uh, you know, hopefully, he gets that opportunity and goes out and is very successful. This isn't the first time that that you've been around the draft, and what is it like for you to know that if a guy gets drafted lower than he thinks, he could come back? But obviously. You know, the goal is to play professionally. Mm -hmm. How do you kind of rationalize that as, as the head coach? You, you try to help them uh, at least lay out what you think uh, are the pros and cons. Uh, they still have to make a decision. Uh, the one thing that's tough to tell somebody, you know, this early in their life is, uh, you know, the education is so important because the education is important you, into you 5, 10, 15, 30 years down the line. Uh, and it's tough for those young people to think that far ahead. Uh, if you're not making a ton of money, uh, it's it's not in your uh, best interest, in my mind, to go sign. Uh, I think Justin was very smart. Uh, he Obviously, he didn't get an opportunity last year, but he came back. He's within one semester of graduating. Uh, 
uh, going to be able to go out and concentrate on baseball, and then it'll be much easier for him to come back and finish his degree. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Scott Boris, about 15 years ago, may maybe even 20 years ago, did a uh, uh, presentation at our coaches' convention, and he talked about uh, if you don't uh, make over a million dollars in your signing bonus and you don't go back and get your college degree, uh, you, you are behind in life. And so, again, that's tough for, for a lot of people to understand. But, you know, if you look at salaries today and, and uh, the quality of education that you get here uh, and how well our student athletes do once they go into the work world uh, from a financial standpoint, uh, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense to make sure you get your degree and then move on. Kevin Duchesne named today to the uh, freshman All-America team just another award for a kid who had an outstanding season. Now, Kevin did a really good job of continuing to improve. I think the thing I've been most impressed with him with is uh, his attitude uh, since the season's been over. I mean, he's not you know, gloating and, and he's not satisfied. Uh, he sent a, a uh, text out to all the freshmen about you know, what they have to do as a group to improve, to make sure that we uh, advance further into the tournaments and, and have better seasons. Uh, so you know, he, he's a person that cares about the team. He understands uh, baseball. He's uh, continued to try to learn. Uh, Drew Dickinson's done a great job with him to help him progress. Uh, I think he's going to be very, very special. He's already shown a lot, and I think he's going to be a very, very special player for us as he moves ahead. I want to ask you about uh, Thomas. Is a possibility he could he could go somewhere this weekend? Uh, what do you see in terms of his, like we talked about Justin Jordan, in terms of what he brings now and where he needs to work to really stick at the next sure. level if he does that? Uh, you know, Thomas is a very good player. He's one of the best defensive shortstops that, that I've seen in college, and that's where his strengths are. Uh, his other strengths are the, the, the fact that he competes so well and he really understands the game. Uh, you know, Thomas and I have talked, as well as Thomas and the other coaches, he, he really needs to, to dedicate himself in the weight room and improve his strength so he has more durability. Uh, I think as he improves his strength, uh, he, he becomes a better hitter because he'll use the entire field. Uh, he gets out on the front foot at times, uh, but still makes solid contact. Uh, I really believe that uh, you know if Thomas comes back for one more year, that he could put himself up in the you know three through eight draft range. And when you get up in that uh, situation, uh, organizations look at you differently. They feel like they have more invested in uh, in you and. And you seem to stick around longer. Ultimately, I guess the decision comes down to them and their and their families. But I guess in the in the time period where they have to make this decision, how much of a role do you play, or have you basically talked to them all you can talk to them? And ultimately, now it's in their quarter. Do you have dialogue with them during that time period in terms of helping them make that decision? Every family is very different. Uh, you know, I would like to at least be able to talk to the family so they understand some things. Uh, certain families will completely shut you out, and certain families will. Uh, rely on you a lot, and you know, I, I want what's best for our, our players. I, I want them to go out and be very successful. Uh, you know, I, I think the one thing that, that people have to understand, you, know, you look at our, our class three years ago, and uh, you had three juniors that left. One of them's in extended spring training, so he's not on a club, probably going to end up on a short season club, and two of them are already released. And so, uh, you know, those are guys that left and still haven't finished their degrees yet. I think they will come back and finish their degrees. Uh, but I think uh, that extra year of maturing, uh, both from a mental standpoint and understanding the game better, and then being that much closer to your degree are very, very important.